happy Sunday. Um, it's very rainy today. It's excellent swamp hag weather and excellent writing weather. Big fan. Um, I know a lot of people don't like this weather because it means they have to stay inside, but I do like this weather because it means I have to stay inside. <laughs> um, anyway, I was thinking this morning, uh, so I was scrolling Instagram, you know, as you do first thing in the morning, <clears throat> and I came across this video. Um, I get fed like a lot of neurodivergent content by the algorithm. And it was uh, some people talking about ADHD specifically and, like, how the ADHD brain works and, like, how to visualize ADHD thought processes compared to someone who's neurotypical. And it got me on this, like, train of thought that was, like, so, like, so, so, okay, so, like, I get fed a lot of um, neurodiverse content, right? Most of the content is ADHD specific or autism specific, and there's not really a lot of content on the internet about, uh, or like on Instagram, at least that the algorithm feeds me, about other forms of giftedness. Like I have to like actively go out and um, seek it out. And sometimes it gets frustrating. I am neurodivergent, but I don't have autism and I don't have ADHD. Uh, as far as I'm aware, I have researched and studied and learned and like I've never been diagnosed with either and I don't feel like I have either. Um, I wouldn't be upset if a psychiatrist was like, oh, yeah, you have one of these or another. Um, but I don't think I have either of them. Anyway, the point is there are lots and lots and lots of different types of neurodivergence and some of them I I do, I know for sure that I have, but sometimes when you're like on the internet in these spaces, it feels like autism and ADHD are like the only kinds. And a lot of people like frame their content as in like ADHD versus neurotypical or um, uh, uh, ADHD and autism versus neurotypical. And it's like kind of frustrating <laughs> um, because there's very little acknowledgement of uh, a lot of the other types of, of neurodivergence. And it makes sense. Like autism and ADHD are tough to talk about because um, prior to now, like there wasn't like a lot of social acceptance of them, um, but they're mostly just different ways of experiencing the world uh, certainly can bring disabilities because of the way the world works and functions. But there's plenty of other types that people don't like want to talk about at all like ptsd for example is a form of neurodivergence people don't want to talk about their experiences with ptsd right like that sucks cptsd complex trauma is also a form of neurodivergence people don't want to fucking talk about that either like of course they don't um so it makes sense i guess is what i'm saying that there's less content available and there's less community but i do wish um, I do wish there was more acknowledgement of the other types, even if there's not a ton of like talking or like discussion about them, you know, like more acknowledgement of like, oh, ADHD is just one form of neurodivergence. Autism is just one form of neurodivergence. These are just two forms of neurodivergence. And the actual neurodivergent community is a lot bigger. Um, and making room for people who don't really want to talk about their forms of neurodivergence. Um, if you're curious, if you don't know much about the other types of neurodivergence, you can just like search um, the neurodivergent umbrella and you'll see, I pulled one up here earlier. Um, you'll see that there's like a lot of different umbrella graphics, but they include um, like ADHD, ASPD, which I think is now incorporated under autism, um, dissociative identity disorder, bipolar disorder. Uh, I don't remember what NPD stands for. Uh, something personality disorder, <laughs> dyslexia, CPTSD, which stands for complex PTSD, dyspraxia. Dyspraxia is like a condition where you like don't understand like you don't have very good spatial awareness type of thing sensory processing disorder dyscalculia 
dyscalculia is like um, dyslexia, but with math and numbers instead of words and letters. Um, I actually think I might have mild dyscalculia after I read a bunch about it. PTSD, dysgraphia, which is uh, sort of a the inability to write, like to hold a pen or pencil and actually like write. Um, bipolar disorder, autism, epilepsy, OCD. I don't know what ABI stands for. Um, tick disorders, uh, schizophrenia, misophonia, HPD, Down syndrome, syn synesthesia. These are all forms of neurodivergence. Um, giftedness is a form of neurodivergence. They say even like left-handedness is a form of neurodivergence um, because it means that your brain just works differently than right-handed people. I don't really know. And it's a small percentage of the population that's left-handed. Um, anyway, I guess that's just a wish that I was having is that there was like more acknowledgement and space left in the, in the like content um, like producers or whatever you call them, content creators would leave more room for, uh, the other forms of neurodivergence, you know, like that would be nice. <laughs> um, anyway, I can see my medication is visible in the background, so we're just going to slide that over. <laughs> um, oh, do you want to see my forest, my indoor forest? I just rearranged everything in case you didn't notice. That's one of the things that I like to do is rearrange. I've got a giant begonia here. This is a very happy begonia. My mom originally planted it and she gave it to me. This is a type of maple. It gets these red flowers, which it doesn't have right now because I haven't been watering it enough. Um, this is a, an, an inch plant down here. There's a hibernating um, alopecia in there. There's a big aloe plant over there um there's a jasmine plant i got a bunch my friend gave me this it's very cool it's like this base thing with like on a piece of driftwood you see it separates pretty cool huh um this is a spider plant you might be familiar with spider plants this is some kind of cactus thing that my mom gave me uh so i have a philodendron up there um, anyway, so that's what I was thinking about. I was thinking about, I think about neurodivergence a lot because of my own, and I, um, I don't like to talk about them for reasons, but I do sometimes wish that more space would be made in the community for other forms of neurodivergence and like not, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of like framing of like ADHD versus neurotypical, but I I just feel like brains are just like a lot more complex and there's a lot more nuance and it's not really one or the other. And the more you learn about it, the smaller the neurotypical group becomes because more and more things, it's, it's much more like a spectrum of um, neurological difference than it is like one versus the other. But there's like a lot of one versus the other sort of framing. So anyway, that's what I've been thinking about. <laughs> um. It, I was thinking about it yesterday, too, because Josh and I got into this argument, and um, I was thinking about how there's this thing that I do when I'm learning about a thing or, like, studying a thing or trying to explain or understand something, um, which is that I have different forms of visualization. So, you know how, like, a little while ago, about a little while ago, it might have been, like, three years, I don't even know anymore. But there was this thing going around the internet that was like, um, um, uh, some people have like a, a monologue that constantly goes in their head, like 24 seven. Right. And then there, a bunch of other people were like, oh my God, I don't have a monologue that goes in my head 24 seven. And so, um, it was just like this huge like conversation on the internet where some people had an internal monologue and some people didn't. And I had thought a lot about it at the time because I was like, well, sometimes I think in words, but sometimes I think in sound and sometimes I think in feelings and sometimes I think in, in like just different ways. Um, and so when I'm trying to solve a problem, 
a lot of times what I'll do is I'll access different ways of thinking as a way of sort of approaching and understanding the problem that I'm trying to solve. So, for example, philosophy is a really easy uh, example, or maybe it's less uh, of a good example. <laughs> um, but philosophy usually starts off with a question, right? What does it mean to be human? Is something ethical? Um, is, you know, what is tr true? What is true or truth? What does truth mean, right? And so um, usually I'll start like super hyper fixated and then I'll kind of like broaden my view. But what does that actually look like? So I was trying to come up with metaphors um, last night. And the first one I came up with is like my brain is like a, a room full of security camera screens and there's like hundreds of them. And usually I'm only focused on a few. And I very rarely only focus on one screen at a time. But, you know, it might be like, oh, I'm doing this right now. So I have my one screen, literally. But I also have one eye on Dandelion, who's laying over here on the floor. And I just noticed the cat walk in. So, like, I'm also, like, aware of my space. I also have one eye on the, like, oh, Josh and, and um, Blueberry are off doing their thing. I also... Um, I'm aware that someone in my family just had a surgery, so I kind of have that going on in the back of my head. I also just realized I have no idea where my phone is, so that's a screen that I clearly forgot about. <laughs> and so I have all of these screens going on simultaneously, right? Um, I think my phone's upstairs. I should go get that in a minute. <laughs> so I have all of these screens, um, sorry, going on simultaneously. And if someone says to me, you know, here's a question or a problem that I'm trying to solve, the very first thing I do is I zero in on the single, that single screen. Um, but a lot of screens are connected to each other, right? Like if you're looking at a security screen, you have a, 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 a screen showing you one room, but there might be another camera showing the hallway outside that room, right? So they're connected to each other in a sense. So if you're looking for intruder, you're going to check the room where you think the intruder is, but you're also going to look at the hallways connecting to that room, right? And so that's what I do as I first zoom in on that one screen. And then I look at all of the connecting screens. Um, and then I look at all of the other connecting screens because things don't really have boundaries. And eventually I might run into a wall like, OK, I don't have any more information. And it's either because there's no more information to be had um, or it's because I need to go and acquire more information um, and learn more about that topic. Um, sometimes I can zoom like way, way, way out and see lots and lots and lots of screens. But what happens when I do that mentally is that there's fewer details. Um, but I can see the pattern more clearly, if that makes sense. I don't know if this is making any sense. <laughs> so a lot of times what happens is like, I know things and I understand the, like the structure of a thing or the pattern of a thing, but I can't prove it because I can't zoom I can't zoom in to get the specific details and also simultaneously hold the entire pattern in my mind at once um and I think what an, an ends up happening is I sort of describe this as two-dimensional but it's actually three-dimensional or four-dimensional right because it's like you have the thing the thing doesn't exist only right now it also exists in time so you have your problem now, you have the way it was before, you have the way it could be in the future, along with multiple possibilities, plus you have all of the things connecting to it. And so what ends up happening is I live in this state that doesn't look like a singular internal monologue in my head, and it also doesn't look like silence. It looks more like... Um, like in a sci-fi TV show, when they have their computers pull, pull up like a holographic map of the universe, that's more like how I think, is I exist, in, my brain is this like 3D holographic map, and I can zoom in on a particular region, or I can zoom out and look at the whole thing, um, or I can zoom way, 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 way into like the, the minute details, and, and there's some parts of my holographic map that I spend a lot more time in, like writing, right, or my marriage, and so I know a lot more information about those. I have a lot more um, access and understanding of the patterns and all of the different things, but there are other areas where I just haven't spent as much time. And so I have to put more work into understanding or like really having clarity on a question or a problem. So that's how my brain works. That's what it looks like, more or less. <laughs> um, 
And that's how I write my books, is I go into my holographic map and I just follow a trail and see where it leads. So I'm a pantser. Um, I probably should stop. I don't even know how long it's been, but I have to work today. I have a deadline. Tomorrow I have to send a manuscript to my proofreader. Um, and I'm not done yet. So uh, I got to get going. But anyway, thanks for listening. I hope you have a really nice Sunday. I hope you find a way to cave up and cuddle with your favorite pet or spouse or child. That's what other people have, children. Um, And I hope you have a, a cozy, pleasant, relaxing day. Thanks for... Oh, I forgot. I'm supposed to come with a sign-on and a sign-off. Nah, whatever. Today's not the day for that. See you later, alligator. <laughs>